metal as a whole has such a diversity and everything can kind of blend together. And, uh, mm -hmm. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. Fractal Universe is one of the more exciting bands to come out of France today. Uh, it's hard to categorize this band, but let's just leave it as progressive, avant-garde, technical, death metal, with other influences as well. Anyway, I sat down with the band to learn everything about the new album. Vincent, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, this is the first time that we get to, to, to speak. So let me just see if I have my history correct. Um, you asked a group of friends to start a band. They asked, what genre do you want to play? They were asking you jazz, death metal, new wave, pop, R&B, prog rock. And you just said, yes, I want to play all of that combined. Is that roughly how it went? <laughs> Well, we still had uh, in mind to, to form like a metal band, like extreme metal, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you summed it up pretty good. We try not to limit ourselves in terms of the influences, so yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Are there boundaries for you or are there things, are there bridges you won't cross with Fractal Universe or are you like, no, we're just, you know, a, a very creative bunch of people and we, we want to go wherever we go? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there are any boundaries. I think, uh, like being a metal band allows you to, uh, have basically no limits in terms of how, uh, heavy, how brutal things can get. And, uh, we also try to, to not set any limitations as for what influences we can fit inside of them. So. We try to, to to leave that whole dynamic range open, and uh, yeah, for some things, uh, it's pretty easy to make them them fit in the metal context. Uh, for others, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe not so much, but uh, yeah, we we try not to to put some limitations on our writing. That's maybe what defines what we try to do. Um, Metalheads like to pat themselves on the back, talking about how open-minded and progressive people are and how inclusive the metal community is at the same time that same community can be extremely conservative and can be um from a lot of different angles but definitely also from a music perspective there's a lot of purism in in metal as well um how how is do, do you see very different reactions from different sub communities within the metal world well, I totally get what you mean. Metal is uh, really open-minded, but at the same time very conservative and it's yeah. really ambivalent. And um, yeah, sometimes maybe if people try to, to put us within like one genre in particular, like death metal, for example, then maybe some people will get, uh, will, will not get it. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. um, obviously we have some death metal influences, but there's also so much more to it. So uh, I think yeah, to some people who really want to put us into, into boxes, it might be a little more tricky. And uh, yeah, that's a shame because uh, I think metal as a whole has such a diversity and everything can kind of blend together. <sighs> You also played a saxophone, which um, is a very unique sound, um, which I always thought is such a perfect match for uh, uh, for for metal, like a like a guitar solo or a saxophone solo could play off each other really well. We've seen some bands in the past and uh, do that. You know, there's Amorphous at times has used saxophone. Carpathian Forest has done that. Tesseract has done that. Obviously, we've got Shining that then have done this as well. And quite recently, even more mainstream acts like Ghost have included some saxophone on their albums. Um, I love that. I can imagine that not everybody feels that that's something that should be there 100%. Um, should we? We've heard some saxophone on the singles that were released already. Should we expect more saxophone going forward? Yeah, definitely. There is saxophone on uh, four tunes in total on the record. And uh, yeah, that's really something we, uh, we, we had fun adding to the record and we really look forward to, to do that again in the future because for the first time I'm playing the saxophone on the records myself so that was pretty exciting 
And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, now looking forward to incorporate that more into the yeah. writing, even on the upcoming releases, maybe, because I was still fairly new to the instrument on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, talking about having fun, and we'll go into the music in, in, just, a, in just a second, but, you know, for your video, a clockwork expectation, um, you guys recorded that in the Gouffre de Poudry, if I pronounce that somewhat correctly, uh, caves. Uh, that must have been quite the experience. How was that for you guys? That was amazing, yeah. Um, actually, I've, I had visited the place uh, a long time ago, like 10 or 15 years ago, and uh, I was blown away by the location back then. And so I would never have imagined that we would be recording a music video there, yeah, yeah. have that whole huge environment for us alone and be yeah, able yeah, to, yeah. to like uh, hit drums, uh, <laughs> blowing through the saxophone in such a place. So yeah, yeah kind of unique and uh, it's really otherworldly beautiful. And uh, But it was hard because, uh, yeah, there were many, many steps. We had to carry a lot of gear down there. <laughs> the conditions were kind of extreme. It was pretty cold, pretty humid, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we did it and we are really happy with the result now. Uh, the, the title of that song, A Clockwork Expectation, um, clocks are also referenced in the artwork of the album. And we see a, a skull formed with both some of the band members and clocks in the eyes and, and so on. Uh, do, I, do I take that as a metaphor for time and life running out and a feeling of anxiety behind that? Or how should I interpret the artwork? Yeah, basically the the whole lyrical concept is uh, like talking about death and more specifically mm -hmm. about how we human beings perceive um, the fact that we are mortal, basically, that our yeah. life has a, a given time, that we have a given time on Earth. And yeah, that's the source of a lot of questions, a lot of anxiety, as you said. And uh, basically, I find it amazing that despite knowing that our life will end uh, one day, we still manage to get a lot of meaning out of it. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's basically the whole thematic of the record. And you, you saw it, yeah, we, there is a lot of, uh, of the notion of time, uh, of decay, of uh, maybe also like spirituality or art, how that affects our, our perception of life and everything. Are you the main songwriter uh, for the band? Or well, actually, no. Um, we, we work with a friend of us uh, who's outside of the band, basically, Arthur okay. Masso. He's the main songwriter. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty unique, I think, for a band. And uh, yeah, we yeah, work yeah. in close collaboration. Uh, basically, we send him over the, the finished pre-productions in a musical way with some uh, ideas of concepts and everything. And then we, we map, map everything out together. There is a lot to unpack. And, um, you know, uh, the lyrics like to use metaphors, not, not just um more 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 straightforward metaphor that there's you know philosophical and biological references that are being used um must make it is it must make it quite a challenge for you as well to to memorize all the uh, all the lyrics they're they're um they're not as simple as i want to rock rock i want to rock 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 <laughs> absolutely <laughs> But uh, yeah, I really love his, his way of writing. There are a lot of yeah, metaphors, yeah. a lot of references, like uh, from philosophers, from mythology and, uh, and everything. So it's always very cleverly written. And still, uh, it has that, that heaviness, that roughness yeah. that you would expect from, uh, from metal lyrics on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the rougher parts. This album, if I'm not mistaken, was shaped during the early days of the pandemic, um, predominantly. Um, and then you mentioned, yeah, there's, you know, a sense of running out of time, uh, you know, uh, dealing with your own mortality, uh, the feelings of doubt and anxiety that come with that. Those are all feelings that your fans, no matter where they are, no matter, you know, what their situation in life is. Everybody has had to deal with those things a lot more in the last 18 months uh, than ever before. Do you see how your songs that you that you wrote some time ago, that they are evolving in the meaning and how people relate to them and that people that have gone through this pandemic, this global pandemic, are, are now connecting with some of the themes in your music in a way they never did before? I think these themes uh, can really uh, speak to to anyone, and especially in times like these, as you said, because uh, 
now we are we have to to ask ourselves questions that we have never asked ourselves before and uh, mm -hmm. a lot has changed a lot of things that we took for granted uh, yeah. are totally gone for now so uh, it, it's really it's really hard to uh, to find meaning in times like these especially and uh, i think for us doing music and uh, trying to keep connected with fans and have this perspective of being able to do shows again maybe in the near future all yeah. that helps us to go through uh, times like these and uh, to, to keep hope, basically. In the near future, we'll have shows again. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of new tours being either announced or re-announced. What, uh, what can you share um, about your plans uh, for the future? We have a couple more shows scheduled in France for the late summer, early autumn. But apart from that, uh, we don't have that much on the fire yet. We, we have to see because one of our big plans would be to make it uh, to North America. We have a booking agent working hard over there to, to bring us over. But uh, yeah, for yeah. now, there are still a lot of uh, a lot of things we cannot really rely on, like getting visas sure. and everything. So there's a lot of complicated stuff still ahead. But um, as for France and maybe other European countries, we can definitely expect to get back on stage uh, this year or early next year. Given that you said that this is a, an even more layered and diverse album than before, um, when you are working on bringing these songs to life, um, are you going to be able to do that with just the band members? Are you going to have to bring additional folks with you or are you going to rely on some audio magic to, to, to make these complex songs come to life with just you know, the few members in the band? Well, no, that's only going to be the four of us. We can have some uh, samples just to uh, add some layers. But uh, as always in our music, they're always quite in the background. Yeah, and the yeah. main work actually is to arrange like the song for two guitars and three voices because uh, uh, Valentin and Hugo are doing backing vocals live. So um, it's yeah, yeah. mainly just the four of us and just a slight little bit of sample enhancement. But uh, actually everything um, happens to be but it's quite easy to arrange it for for two guitars because you can like narrow it down to the essential parts pretty easily yeah yeah yeah. obviously sometimes little adjustments have to be made especially because switching the, from uh, guitar to saxophone yeah exactly <laughs> because of that so we had to rework uh, the structure just maybe adding a little section here and there to yeah, give yeah, me yeah. some time to switch but uh <laughs> yeah i think it feels pretty natural we've had some uh awesome. rehearsals on stage already and uh, everything Everybody felt comfortable with um, the the, okay. the new song structures, basically, because there are not major changes, and uh, most of the time it just builds up the the hype for the for the arrival yeah, yeah. of the saxophone. <laughs> it's quite hard to realize that this music is going to be out in two weeks because, like, uh, we haven't played a single show in almost a year and a half so yeah, yeah. yeah it's quite hard to to realize that in in two weeks from now we are shooting this interview people are gonna hear the whole record and yeah there are many people that uh, that, that said that they were looking forward to it and i mm -hmm. hope they will enjoy it but um i'm still pretty relaxed i mean i i'm really happy with how this album turned out both in terms of the songs the production and, and the whole packaging the whole project and, and everything so uh yeah i'm pretty excited but um only in a positive way there is no yeah, apprehension yeah. to how the people are gonna react to it because yeah I, i'm doing music mostly for myself firstly because i'm passionate yeah. about it and uh, so if people like it it's good if not well I, i'll keep doing it <laughs> <laughs> look forward to the release of the album we've seen some really interesting songs already and uh, i'm very excited to see what's next so thank you so much for your time and uh yeah i wish you all the best with the launch cycle thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure you are awesome for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel